So if we do a deep dive analysis of Tesla, we can see that it had steady growth from, let's say, late 2019. And then it's at this point here that we had COVID around February, March time, say around here. And then you see from this point here, that price took a sharp dip. But ever since that dip, we've had constant strong growth all the way from this level in 2020, a great recovery from COVID until we get to here, January, 2021, where we've kind of hit our peak level. If we draw our resistance level in here, we can see that this level has seemed to be quite a significant level for Tesla. So we had our, our growth and we've hit a kind of resistance ceiling here. And then since then, Tesla's kind of struggled to reach that level back again. You know, it took quite a dip and then gradually it's been trying to recover back to its high resistance level. And then when we got to here around October, 2021, we can see that Tesla did manage to break above this level, but it still struggled to break any sort of high or go on any sort of run um, above that. We can see that we're in a level of consolidation. If we draw our channel here, we can see, say around this level here, we can see this whole area here is a level of consolidation. So from, you know, October, 2021, all the way up to, you know, January, 2022, we've just been seeing this massive consolidation, you know, bouncing back and forth between our support and resistance levels. We can see that we're bouncing up to resistance, back down to support, back up to resistance, all the way down to our support level, back up to resistance and then back down to our support level. What we can see here in this section, that price actually consolidated around our support level. And it seemed to be happy around this support level until it took a steep dive here. And we can see that Tesla struggled since the beginning of the year. This is around the 4th and 5th of January. If you notice that most markets have fallen at this date, we can see it's straight forward into the downside. And even when it's tried to recover, it hasn't managed to break this resistance level. And if we look closer today, we can see that Tesla has a massive red bar here showing a steep decline in Tesla stock on Friday, the 11th of March. On Friday, Tesla stock had a high of $843.80 and a low of $793.77 with its close at $795.35. So we saw a sharp decline on Tesla stock on Friday. So if you've been keeping up with the headlines, you will see that today they've asked why Tesla stock has tumbled again today. It says it looks like Friday is going to end the week on another down note for Tesla. Tesla stock is down 4.2%, a much steeper fall than the Nasdaq's overall 1.1% decline. So if you look at what's causing this, we can see that Tesla is having continued troubles with efforts to ramp up its production of its own batteries. And if we look further, we can also see that Tesla sources battery sales from suppliers like Panasonic and LG. So the trouble from Panasonic LG plus their own battery supplies is what's causing this fall in Tesla. If we look at Panasonic, ticker symbol PCRFY, we can see that Panasonic has been declining since October with a slight pullback towards the beginning of the year. And then by early January, we've seen a steep decline in the price of Panasonic. If we look at Panasonic, it's actually trading below all three of our moving averages with the 200 simple moving average trading above the 50 simple moving average and the 50 simple moving average trading above the 20 simple moving average and the 20 simple moving average trading above price. If you want to understand more about using moving averages to analyze stocks, then click on this video here in the card. We can also see that our trend filter is actually colored red. Our trend filter gives us a clear indication whether price is acting bullish or bearish. If you'd like to get access to this custom tool, then go to focusoninvesting.io. If we look at LG, we have a similar story with a good recovery from COVID. Then we ended up in a massive area of consolidation, but it appeared towards the end of the year that we were seeing signs of a recovery. But since the beginning of the year, we've seen a strong decline in LG stock. If we look closer, the bars are very indecisive. Lots of short bars with long wicks, lots of gaps in between the bars. This is showing indecisiveness in the market. A lot of skittish behavior with price jumping up and jumping back down again. If we look at our trend filter, we can see that it's mostly red especially at the moment after we was going for our green recovery, we saw a big tank in price and currently also LG stock is bearish. We can see the 200 moving average above the 50 simple moving average and the 50 simple moving average above the 20 simple moving average and price below all three of them with quite a big gap between the 20 simple moving average and the 50 simple moving average. 
indicating the sharp decline of price of LG stock. So what is it that's causing the decline of Tesla, Panasonic and LG? Well, we know all three of these companies rely on batteries. And what is a key element of batteries? Nickel. We can see that nickel price is doubled to a record $100,000 a ton. Trading is suspended in London. The LME, which is the London Metal Exchange, said in a statement that it had been monitoring the evolving situation in Russia and Ukraine, and it was evident that this had an effect on the nickel market. The London Metal Exchange on Tuesday suspended the trading of nickel after prices more than doubled to surpass $100,000 per metric ton. The LME said in a statement that trading will be suspended for at least the remainder of the day. The LME will actively plan for the reopening of the nickel market and will announce the mechanics of this to the market as soon as possible, it added. The exchange said it had been monitoring the evolving situation in Russia and Ukraine and it was evident that this had affected the nickel market, citing extreme price movements in Asian trading hours. Commodity prices have been spiraling upward on supply fears related to Russia's onslaught of Ukraine, with the ongoing war and array of Western sanctions raising disruption fears. So if you're a member of our Patreon on focusoninvesting.io, you would have known that this week, particularly, we were focusing on commodities. So why were we focusing on commodities? Well, we know in times like this, when we have war, it affects the markets really heavily. We've seen the Ukraine crisis produce a death cross in the Nasdaq and in the Dow Jones, and with one just about to form in the S&P 500, meaning that we will have a bear market in three major markets. And what we know is when the markets are down, general public consensus is that it's a more sure bet to invest your money in commodities, things like hard metals, such as gold, which is up, silver, which is up, copper, which is up, palladium, which is up, and of course, nickel, which is massively up. If we take an analysis of nickel from say about the 1st of March, we can see that we've had a massive growth over 152%. We can see that nickel has been mostly flat until we got to this Russia and Ukraine crisis where we can see this massive spike in price. We can see that price is trading well above our moving averages with our moving averages being ordered 20, 50 and 200. And we can see the sharp upturn in all three of our moving averages. We can also see a sharp upturn in the 200 simple moving average. Remember the 200 simple moving average is a lot slower to move. When we see an upturn in the 200 simple moving average that's this sharp, that means we're seeing a serious spike in price action. And it's this serious spike in price action, which is putting pressure on Panasonic, putting pressure on LG and also putting pressure on Tesla. So this is the reason why we're seeing a decline in Tesla stock. If it was me personally, I would not be invested into Tesla stock and I'll be taking a look at these commodities. As I stated previously, anytime there's any sort of conflict, the conflict affects the markets. And whenever there's uncertainty in the markets, people generally turn to solid commodities and hard metals like nickel. If you would like to learn trading strategies on how to invest in these commodities, then go to focusoninvesting.io. And if you want to keep up with the latest in the markets, then hit that subscribe button.